disc brake cleaner is absolutely wonderful stuff that you should be using on your discs on a regular basis, especially after washing your bike. Now it's great because it blasts off dust and muck and it'll evaporate away so you don't need to wipe it or touch it afterwards. However, there are occasions when you're going to need a deep clean on your discs. For example, if you're adding new pads and you need to bed them into your existing rotor, uh, if it is really mucky or dirty, or if you've had your bike on a bike rack on the back of a car for a long period of time, perhaps down a wet motorway or a dusty trail, then it might be time to consider a proper deep clean on your rotors. So if that's for you, then stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do that. And do give us a like and a subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. So obviously disc brake cleaner specific for bikes is pretty good, but you will be using a lot of it for a deep clean. Uh, so I would always go with isopropyl alcohol and I'd get it in a squirty bottle so it gets into all the nooks and crannies and those hard to reach areas. Now you do not want to use any bike cleaner, degreaser, any automotive disc cleaners uh, or WD-40 or anything like that because it might have some kind of lubricant in it and you don't want to be leaving any residue at all on your discs afterwards. So my advice, isopropyl alcohol every time. Now, when you're working with this sort of stuff, you're going to need a pair of nitrile gloves to protect your hands and you'll need a lint-free rag. So what that means is something that won't break apart uh, and leave dust all over your discs. Uh, I've got a PT's cloth here, which is a light color. I prefer to use a light color because then I can see when uh, I'm pulling dirt off the discs and when it's stopped becoming dirty. So that's really handy. You can use shop towel or blue roll, but I find that this tends to break apart when you start scrubbing away at the disc. So maybe save it for the end when you just want to wipe it uh, clean at the end. And then if you are resurfacing them, if you feel that they need resurfacing, then you might want some emery paper or sandpaper and something of a fine grit, like I've got a 120 grit here, or even higher. The higher the number, the finer the grit, and that will ensure that you're resurfacing it uh, without scratching it too deeply. So you can effectively do this on the wheel or on the bike, but I prefer to take it off completely because it gives me an opportunity to really get close to it and also inspect both sides properly. And inspection is the first thing you wanna do is really examine the disc, make sure there's no scratches or scores in there that are too deep to recover because otherwise there's no point carrying on if you need a new disc in the first place. Also do check the widths. If you have a caliper device like this, then you can check the width of your disc to make sure that they are still above the minimum recommendation, which on this is 1.5 mil. Now this disc has been scorched uh, you can see that it's actually starting to change color. It's quite black. I'm gonna give it a clean to see what I can do, but I think at this stage, it might actually need a resurface uh, if we're going to save it at all. But let's start with the cleaning and see what we can bring off it in the first place. What you want to do is get your nitrile gloves, and this is to protect your hands from the chemicals you'll be working with. But also from now on, you don't want to be touching your discs at all with your own hands. You don't want to be getting any residue on there from an old sandwich you've eaten. But also you will produce natural oils from your hands, whether they are clean or not. So you don't want any of that on your disc. Do wear clean gloves, especially when you put your discs back on your bike. So now it's for the cleaning and isopropyl alcohol or IPA is your best friend in this. It's also important to note that this can cause serious eye irritation, maybe some skin irritation. Uh, if you get it anywhere, you shouldn't. So do use it in a well-vented room and try and take regular breaks if you can. And don't forget 
those nitrile gloves. As I said, do not use anything else that may leave residue on your disc. That will affect your braking performance. Now, what you want to do is squirt it really liberally all around your disc and get your lint-free rag or an old towel and just start scrubbing and doing circular motions until you start to see all the black and the dirt come out into your cloth. It won't leave any residue, it's safe on your bike, it's safe on seals and it will evaporate as well, but it will sit around for a bit for you to work into this disc. Now, as you can see, I've pulled quite a bit of dirt and possibly some breaking dust from pads rubbing against the discs, obviously. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just keep moving along the cloth and using clean sections of this cloth until I'm rubbing the disc and not getting any more black on it. And then I know that it's pretty clean. And at this stage, once you've done both sides of your disc, because obviously your calipers clamp on both sides, then what you can do is blast it with some disc brake cleaner like this, just to get rid of any residue from your cloth, any fibers perhaps that may have broken off, just to blast it and then let it air dry uh, and you're good to go with that. However, if you've got to this stage and you think that there's a bit of discoloration like mine, a bit of scorching, perhaps maybe a bit of scratching that you think you can buff out, then that's when we start to think about resurfacing the discs. So I've got my 120 grit sandpaper here. And what I'm going to do is break off just a small bit. And I'm going to start working my way around the braking surface, just in light circular motions. And what I want to do is see if that starts to change the color back to the original silver, which means I'm taking off all of that bad uh, surface. And what I want is a kind of a matte silky finish. I don't want this shiny surface that I've got at the moment, which suggests that the disc might be glazed. And then we'll see if it is refreshed enough to use, but it's gonna be a bit of trial and error. So I've actually managed to resurface that pretty well with the sandpaper and it didn't take long at all. So I've actually managed to lift out some of that darkened scorching around the disc. There are some still uh, big scratches around the outside, which may be of concern, but I think the best thing to do is to re-bed some pads into this disc on the bike uh, and just take it for a ride and see how they do. Uh, it's probably not a great idea to go out and race these straight away. You wanna make sure that they have actually worked and you do have a decent amount of braking power. Uh, otherwise, some cases, they may not be saved and you may have to replace them, perhaps keep these as emergency spares. But in this instance, the surface looks good. It looks silver and matte. And I've just used my calipers and checked the width and I haven't gone down past the recommended minimum. So we're good to try these out on the bike. So now you've cleaned your discs it's time to get yourself a nice fresh pair of nitrile gloves so that you can put them back on your bike if you took them off. And don't forget to use a torque wrench of your preference to torque up the bolts. Now, this isn't just a matter of safety, but if you have anything that is slightly loose or not to manufacture a spec, then you can get a bit of a warbling noise in your discs, which is super annoying. You'll also need to bed your rotors in. We don't just bed pads, we bed rotors in as well. So even if you're using your existing pads, then make sure you go for the brake bedding in process again, because you'll need to deposit some of that material from your pads onto your discs. Incidentally, if you've just resurfaced your discs, this might be the time to think about whether you want to be changing the materials in your pads, because you should always use sintered pads with discs that were bedded in with sintered pads or resin with resin. So if you want to change, maybe now's the time to think about it. 
Also, if you've gone through this process because you took long car journeys with your bike on the back of dusty roads or motorways, for example, then maybe now's the time to start thinking about a cover for your discs or a cover for your entire bike so that you'll reduce the amount of work you have to do in the future. But for now, thank you for watching. And if you found this useful, then do give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel.